Hey Pit Masters, what's up? Today I'm going to show you guys how to make the perfect cast iron skillet steak. We're going to be using our Kamada Joe Jr. for this cook. I have some leftover charcoal inside my Kamada Joe Jr. We're going to add a little bit more and then light it up. Of course, since this is a Jr., I don't want the biggest chunks in there. So either you got to break them up or smash them. Sorry. I'm not normally a violent person. Looks absolutely perfect. Time to put our fire starters in, light them up, and wait for our charcoal to be fully lit. Of course, any good cast iron skillet steak starts with cast iron. So you're going to be needing a skillet which has sufficient size for your steak to fit into, and a little bit more. And that leads us to our beautiful steak. Look at this ribeye. Look at that marbling. This is 120 days grain fed ribeye steak. This thing looks absolutely amazing. Can't wait to eat it. Of course, we need to cook it first. The biggest advantage of using a skillet is it will give you that absolutely beautiful crust in the outside of your steak. What that cast iron does, it, it will retain the heat and it will stick to your steak and then it will release it building up that crust and building it up. And that's what the difference is between a cast iron skillet steak and an ordinary steak. Our coals are nice and hot, so it's time to put our skillet onto the grill grate. We want our cast iron skillet to heat up and retain a lot of energy. Once our pan is hot, we're going to pour in a little bit of olive oil. Now, contrary to popular belief, olive oil can have a high smoke point. And that's important. The high smoke point means when your oil starts smoking and practically starts burning. If you have an olive oil which is extra virgin, you have a low smoke point, which means it will start smoking early. And when you have a normal olive oil, an original olive oil, they call it most of the time, it has a high smoke point. So we are going to use an original olive oil. With my hand, I'm going to check the temperature of our cast iron skillet now don't touch the iron you're gonna get burned but you can see that it's getting hot we're getting a little bit of blue smoke time to put in our olive oil make sure that the oil gets everywhere we know our pan is hot time to put in the steak immediately you get that smell of your steak searing this is fantastic we need a good sear we're going to leave the steak as it is for a while. We want it to build up that crust first before we start moving it around. You can see that we got a beautiful crust on one side. It's time to flip it. Now we'll start searing the other side. Now that we have a good bit of crust on both sides of our steak, we're going to close the bottom vent and lower the temperature in our skillet. We need our steak to cook. We don't want to have just that crust and the raw inside. So we're slowing it down and we're going to add flavor. We'll put in a lump of butter and we're going to let that melt into the pan. To add flavor, we're going to add two twigs of rosemary and six twigs of thyme. We'll break up two garlic cloves and add them to the pan. The smell that we're getting out of that pan is just mind blowing. We smell butter, we smell the fresh herbs. It's all coming together. Now what we need to do is slowly let that steak come up to temperature while we keep on building that crust. Now that is the cast iron sear. <laughs> it looks absolutely amazing. You can see that the crust is getting a little bit dry on the inside. From this point on, we're basically frying the steak in butter. Just keep flipping and flipping our steak building up and building up that crust. Look at how gorgeous that is. In the meantime, we keep checking the temperature at the core of our steak, making sure that we don't overcook it. We're looking for a core temperature of 54 degrees Celsius. Our steak is done. It's time to take it off the skillet and let it rest on the board. Resting the steak is one of the most important parts of the cooking process. It helps relaxing the muscle fibers in the steak again, making it as tender as can be. And at the same time, all of the fat that rendered out in the steak is spreading out and giving that steak the beautiful flavor. And while our steak is resting, we'll sprinkle on a little bit of Maldon salt. The main feature of this steak is the crunch of its crust. And listen to this. Now that is what I call a crust. Let's slice into it. Way nice. Now that is a good looking steak. 
that crust is absolutely insane. Now it's time for my favorite part of this show, the taste test. <laughs> and especially with this steak, because we added so much flavor and hopefully the crunch is there. Here we go. Oh, cast iron steak. <laughs> the crunch, it's insane. Grain fat steak, 120 days with a crust like this. Gorgeous. We added all that flavor, the garlic, the rosemary, the thyme. It did such a good job in elevating the flavors of the steak even more. You can wake me up in the middle of the night for a steak like this. Denise, you want to try one? Mmm, I like the crust. That literally is crunchy. It's crackling in your mouth. It's deep fried steak, basically. Really, really good stuff. Do we get the dance? You don't force the dance. It's worth my steak dance. Morrison, you give it a try. Mmm, this crust. You did it. Mm, mm, mm. While we are finishing up this plate, I want to wish you guys, uh, I don't know, wish. I wish you all the best. <laughs> but what I really want to say is thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, then, you know, let us know. Leave us a big thumbs up and a comment down below. Big thank you to all of our patrons and our YouTube members. You guys freaking rock. But you know by now. Thank you very much, Notification Squad, and everybody that we have forgotten. Big shout out to all of you guys. Hope to see you guys next time. Until then, it's my luck And keep on grilling. Hey, hey, hey.